here prepared a scene with each sphere has a name according to our play engine brush and i want to test out the brushes as we go one thing to consider is that the right click is is the way you make the brush bigger and smaller and if i right click drag it will make it more intense and just the middle mouse also helps to change the size of the brush if i press ctrl shift it will actually modulate the intensity of the smoothing so i'll make it a bit more intense it will smooth it out like that if i press shift while i'm smoothing i will talk about the settings later let's just jump in and start doing this so i'm pressing ctrl and seeing how it starts to affect the sphere then let's switch to a wet clay brush and let's see what's it doing so i mean it's kind of pretty much what it says it's uh, the wet clay is a little bit more muddier than what we have with a base clay so thick layer just draws essentially big layers big slopes well it's a pretty thick brush right now so i can do this and for me the biggest fun really when i start to go and uh, delete all this stuff around because this is like <laughs> destruction in 3d code is really fun I'll add a little bit more an extruder click on this guy similar to the uh, thick layer brush just slightly different behavior and let me pick this all up and the box build up I feel like it's probably a bit faster to build up the surface. Generally, I feel like all of them are fairly similar, especially if you start using the smoothing on top. Say, I use the if I use the base clay brush and then switch started to smooth it, it will look very much like the wet clay brush. Let's start going through these uh, tool settings on the brushes. I have my vacuum attached, uh, just a cheap one, a small vacuum. And let's go through the degree. So some of these brushes, brush settings, they're a little bit bizarre. So if we go do this and then switch degree to zero, uh, it kind of changes it more like extrusion depth, really, rather than any smoothing. So I would just keep it at 100 and never change it ever again, essentially. Smudge degree, I feel the same thing if I go from 100 to a 0. Is there much difference? Yes, so you can see something, but I, I'm not seeing anything, to be honest. So, okay, let's put it back to 100 and never touch again. Another option you can turn on is paint with dabs. So then it starts to look like that. If I turn this off and start to do it, a little bit of difference. I feel like without it, it looking better, in my opinion. So again, it's one of those options that don't affect much, in my opinion. Uh, and you can change the spacing, so that will affect how many of them you're going to put. And you can see they start to look rather different. So let's keep it at a safe, small distance. Rotate. I'll follow the brush. So. Yeah, as long as I go, it will rotate long. If I turn this off, you can see the alpha now is kind of strictly pointing downwards. I definitely want to keep that on. Steady stroke, I can go to like 60 and essentially do a long, more of a smooth curve versus a bit of a jiggery line I'll do myself. And depending on the subject, I want to turn it on and off. I have a build, build up setting. There's a build up setting by default it is use build up which is pretty good if i turn on no build up it, you will see this it will become doing it like a layer on top of each other looks rather non-organic so let's keep it an absolute mode i guess it's a mixture of build up and no build up doing like a layer uh, build up spe speed let's crank it up and uh, yeah you just you're able to draw this Faster, should be you know, pretty interesting. Can be rather cool if you want to draw something out. 
in the air, though there are other tools that can do that kind of better, I would say. So using Jitter gives you a lot of options for Jitter. So you know you can just randomly do all this stuff. And then uh, if you're doing something like a rock surface, Jitter is really, really helpful. It can really, really help just adding this organic randomness to your mesh. I think I've overdone uh, the Jitter parameters. I've played before this less and I feel like having like zero point digits is can be better. Well, I guess also my brush was super strong. So, so Jitter can be really, really helpful in certain situations. We have a peak trajectory and I'll go peak average by default we get this result, and if I go pick from surface, I get this result. So if you can see the difference, you can tell me in the comments. I'm not really seeing it. All right, so position sampling and normal sampling, it kind of affects how we deal with the corners and edges. So if I go both of them to 100, I pick them both to the 100, and then go around, you'll see that the the edge has to be affected slightly differently. Again, something yeah, you can see like here, uh, something for me is not relevant. Relevant. Maybe somebody will find a use to this option. So for me, keeping it at the minimal, a minimal amount, and be able to actually walk around the edges and destroy them at will is more beneficial than trying to go around them. We have here a degree, same degree as the, the top. But we do have the graph here, so I presume if we start playing around and doing something really crazy, here we can adjust the brush a lot. So I say OK and start to draw. And unfortunately, there isn't much I'm seeing here. So what if I go to like 1000%? Uh, it uh, just increases the build up, it doesn't really increase anything else. Though, it does increase the build up like drastically. So if I were to do some stalagmites, I guess it would have been a good option. Using plane offset is actually a pretty important option. So that's our default drawing style. If I turn it off, it will no longer be drawing on itself. It will no longer be uh, this type of a build up. And that could be something that you want to introduce. So it you're more stick to the surface, and then it can modulate the amount of it. I presume overall degree is this top button at the top, top slider. So I can just leave it as it is. Pen depth. Well, that one is essentially affecting the, the brush itself. And let's... Uh, See, yeah, kind of with or without, you cannot see much difference. So you can just leave it alone and not, never touch. A very important button here is use current alpha. This is where it allows us to switch to different options and create some really cool effects. Say, do that, then apply a little bit of smoothing. And grow. Okay, this one is a bit too crazy. What about what about this guy? Yep, so definitely allows to create different type of surface, which is really really important. For me, I rely on alphas all the time, so I feel like out of all the options, using a different alpha is the most important option. Everything else is just slightly helpful. So. Another thing is the degree of smudginess. So again, let's go and increase it to a bunch. And then this is more like, again, affecting everything and affecting the build up strength. Strength doesn't really, not really about the smudge as I can see, but yeah, if you go to extreme values, it definitely starts to 
affect it and give you some interesting results, which you know, I guess you'll have to think around how to apply to your own work. But 50% were good enough. So here you go, just feel free to go and play with this.